Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father Abu, we come to you today, Lord, asking that you will help us to grow spiritually. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And so be it. Yep, that's right, y'all. Spiritual growth is important. But in this class today, we're going to talk about the global earthquake. That earthquake that's supposed to shake down every idol, every wall on the planet. In this class, I'm going to show, I'm going to actually prove by way of the scripture how that event will take place on Christmas. That's right, y'all. It's not going to be a Merry Christmas when this event happens, but, you know, that's what the scripture is saying. And so I'm going to try to quickly run down through here and show you, like I said, by way of scripture. I'm not going to um, make anything up. I'm going to show you how the scripture is pointing to this event happening on Christmas, Christmas Day, maybe even. All right, now the first uh, scripture that I want to bring to your attention is over here in the book of Revelation and chapter 16. We're looking at verses 17, 18, and 19 as it is talking about this great earthquake. You see right there in verse 17, it says, Such as was not since were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. This is going to be the, like it says there, the most uh, severe earthquake that the earth has ever seen. Now, when I was writing up my notes for this class, I didn't plan to come over to this book, the Third Testament of the Bible, and show you this. But I think I will, just to show you how a severe of an earthquake we're actually talking about. Now, you can find this Third Testament of the Bible if you go into Google and do a search for thirdtestament.pdf. That dot .pdf there is actually important. That way, you see this website pop up over here called Jesus-Comes.com. And if you click on it, you'll see a free PDF of the Third Testament of the Bible, which you can download to your computer, and or you could actually print it out. I would suggest that you print it out because this book is uh, very hard to find. But there's one verse that I wanted to show you guys over here talking about this earthquake that's coming out of chapter 55 of the Third Testament of the Bible and chapter 70. It's talking about the same earthquake that we saw over there in the book of Revelation. But you see here that in verse 70 it says uh, the nations of the earth shall emit and of this planet three quarters shall disappear and one quarter only shall remain. This is how severe of an earthquake we're talking about when three quarters of the land mass of the earth is going away going underwater this supports that old myth we hear about Atlantis because not only is some planets going away but there are going to be other land masses that's going to appear anyway let's jump back over here to the book of Revelation because I want to show you how this event is actually going to take place on Christmas. Now, it shouldn't be so surprising if you have read the book of Revelation and chapter 11 many times. You've noticed when it's talking about the two witnesses there in verse 3 and how they prophesy for 1,203 score days. That 1,260 days will be important towards the end of this video. But for now, let's jump down here to verse 7. You see, it says, And when they have finished their testimony, the beast ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, and shall make war against them, and shall overcome and kill them. So this is talking about when the two witnesses are actually killed. You see in verse 11 how they lay in the streets for three and a half days. And you see in verse 12 where they ascend into heaven like Enoch and Elijah did, no doubt. Those individuals were translated like I believe the Messiah was also translated. And that's why we can't find his body nowhere in the earth. But anyway, if you look down here in verse 13, it says, And that same hour was there a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. So here he is talking about this global earthquake. Like I said in, in the scripture, we hear about this earthquake all over the place and how it promises to shake down every building on the planet. Every building is going to be demolished by way of this earthquake. 
Well, we see right here in verse 13 that it happens in the same hour in which they are killed and lay dead in the street. Talking about those two witnesses. Well, come back up here to verse 9. Between the time that they are killed and the time that they lay dead in the street, you see in verse 9 that it says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. That's Christmas, guys. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So you have to understand that that's what these two witnesses will be doing. They will be talking about the law of the Lord. And what the first commandment says, thou shalt have, have no other God before me. Well, celebrating Christmas is the celebration of another God for most people, at least. Those who really know the origins of Christmas around the world. They're not really celebrating the birth of Christ. They're celebrating the sun God. And these two witnesses are reminding them of that. So after they kill them in the street, they're basically having a Christmas party, making merry and sending gifts one to another. But we ain't finished yet. That's just the first hint that lets us know that this global earthquake that we hear just a few verses later is actually going to happen on Christmas. That, that was verse 10 we were talking about. You jump down here in verse 13 again and you see we're talking about this global earthquake. We got a few more verses to look at as we prove that this event is actually going to happen on Christmas. And for the next proof we'll come over to Haggai in chapter 2. Now, the interesting thing about Haggai in chapter 2 is, for one, it's talking about tabernacles. and But then it, it, we see down here in verse 10 that it starts talking about the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month. Of course, tabernacles occurs on the 15th day of the 7th month. But we also see down here that we had a word of the Lord to come by way of Haggai on the 24th day of the ninth month. We see that in verse 10 as he's questioning the priest about uncleanliness and comparing it to the state of Israel in, in, in that day and today, no doubt, as many members of Israel are partaking in some of these pagan feasts. But anyway, what's interesting to us is when we jump down to verse 18, and we see it's also talking about the 4th and 20th day of the month. It says, consider now from this day and upward, from the 4th and 20th day of the month even from the day that the foundations of the Lord's temple was laid consider it so again it's talking about this 4 and 20th day of the month there in verse 18 and in verse 20 we also got a word of the Lord to come unto Haggai in the 4 and 20th day of that same month now before we go on in Haggai you say well what's what's so important about this 4 and 20th day of the month well, to make you understand when this day actually occurred, because of course we're talking about lunar months, we have to jump down to 2 Maccabees and chapter 10. Look in at verse 5, and we're in the Common English Bible, but anyway, we'll use that for now. It says, in verse 5, it says, On the anniversary of the temple's defilement by the foreigners, on that very day, the sanctuary was purified on the 25th day of the month, which is Kislu. Now Kislu is the ninth month. I'm sure if I was to click on that A right there, it would tell me that that's actually the ninth month. What you see in here is the institution of the holy day that we know as Hanukkah. Of course, Hanukkah starts on the 25th day of the month Kislu or the ninth month. But you see up here where it's talking about on the anniversary of the temple's defilement. What that is talking about is Antiochus Epiphanes, who was into sun god worship, and it was on December the 25th of the year 168 BC that he went in and put an abomination of desolation on the altar of the Temple Mount. He basically had a Christmas celebration in the Temple of Jerusalem on December the 25th, which so happened to fall on the 25th day of the ninth month as well now remember that that's going to be important later how in 168 BC those two dates coincided the 25th day of the ninth month and the 25th day of December
In other words, Hanukkah is Israel's replacement of Christmas. After Antiochus Epiphanes was defeated after doing his Christmas celebration only a few years earlier, they have now instituted Hanukkah to fall on that same day according to the sacred calendar. Not the Gregorian calendar, but the sacred calendar. Keslev instead of December. But my point is, you see here, the 25th day of the ninth month corresponded to Christmas in 168 B.C. And here over in Haggai, he's talking about the 24th day of the month, which would be Christmas Eve of 168 B.C. But again, we're talking about the sacred calendar. But look what he's telling him on the 24th day of the ninth month. He says, speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. He's talking about an earthquake. This is that global earthquake that we are talking about over there in the book of Revelation. See how in 22 it says, and I will overthrow the throne of the kingdoms and will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen and will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them and the horses and their riders shall come down everyone by the sword of his brother. This is what the scripture is talking about when he says that he will flatten the mountains for his children's sakes to make all things equal. So when we have this global earthquake that's going to move islands out of their place, shake down every building, even shake down some of the mountains and move them out of their places. That's when his people, the Israelites who are humbled at this time, will rise up. That's when the playing fields will become equal. The heathen won't have all of their trinkets and toys and power and money and buildings and materialism to support their ideas and lifestyles. All of that stuff will be reduced to nothing. And it is those who rely on the Lord that will start to prosper after that day. But again, notice this conversation is talking about the 4 and 20th day of the month. Now, we have to think that that's important. Otherwise, what would he, why would he list it at all that this conversation occurred on the 24th day of the ninth month? But anyway, that's only the second proof. We have yet more proof to discuss on how we know that this global earthquake will occur on December the 25th. And for that, we jump over to Isaiah and chapter 24. You see right there in verse 7, we see the word Mary when it's talking about Mary hearted. When I address this class in the future, I'll go through and talk about more verses, but I'm actually trying to hurry through this class so I can get back to work out there with the people on the homestead here. So I'm going to skip down to verse 16. Matter of fact, let's touch on verse 14. It says, they shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Now, that all seems good, right? Lifting up the name of the Lord, singing of his majesty. Look down here in verse 16. It says, from the uttermost part of the earth, we heard songs, even glory to the righteousness. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealer have dealt treacherously. Yeah, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. So wait a minute. You have these people here who are singing songs in praise of the Lord. But the Lord is talking about his leanness and he's talking about treachery. So think about that for a second in relationship to that day that we call Christmas. How many people around the world will be singing praises to the Most High on Christmas Day, even though they are celebrating a pagan holiday? They will be in houses full of pagan rituals and pagan symbolism like Christmas trees and reefs and mistletoe and logs burning on the fire and all of these pagan rituals they will be partaking in on christmas day while all while at the same time praising the name of the most high god other than the day of easter christmas is the only day in which the people will be praising the name of the lord all while committing treachery partaking in pagan feast days and this will take place all over the world a global holiday well you look down here and it's also talking about a global earthquake down in verse 18 when it's talking about the foundations of the earth 
do shake again he's talking about shaking the earth and again he's making a correlation or a correspondence to Christmas Day saying that this event is going to happen on Christmas Day verse 21 says and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth well look down here at verse 23 it says then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancient gloriously the moon confounded and the sun ashamed does that not sound familiar well if you've read Matthew in chapter 24 Mark in chapter 13 Luke in chapter 21 it should sound familiar all of these verses are talking about the same event but the point that I want to make in this video is that the day that this will occur is on Christmas now the question I know many of you guys are asking is is this going to be the Christmas of the year 2020 or 2021 well I don't think this event will happen in the year 2020 for a number of reasons the main reason is that when you jump back over and you look at Revelation and chapter 11 before we start to hear about these two witnesses and this global earthquake we hear about this 1203 score days we see this also listed in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation the thing about chapter 12 is it starts off talking about that wonder in heaven that woman clothed with the Sun and the moon under her feet and up on her head a crown of 12 stars well that event happened in 2017 September of 2017 when you jump down to verse 6 of the 12th chapter you see it also talking about this 1203 score days so to me what this is saying is that that 1260 days has to start sometime after the Revelation 12 sign in the sky which was on September the 23rd of 2020 well, if you count 1,260 days from September the 23rd, 2017, you end up in March the 6th of the year 2021. So this is the main reason why I don't think this global earthquake will occur in the year 2020 is because the 1,260 days is not up yet. But I could be wrong. But in my opinion, I believe the Christmas in which we can expect to see this global earthquake is more like the year 2024 or the year 2027 and the reason why is because the 25th day of the ninth month or the beginning of Hanukkah as we know it in the year 2024 actually falls on December the 25th and in the year 2027 it falls on December the 24th so just like in the year 168 when Antiochus Epiphanes you have a conjunction between the first day of Hanukkah and Christmas now I'm not a prophet or anything and, and I don't know the future but let me show you one more thing that makes me think that it is actually December the 25th of the year 2027 that we are expecting this event to ha take place now I have covered this in a lot of different classes so I won't go into much detail on this in this class but if you look at the history of the Catholic Church going all the way back to the Emperor Constantine who founded the Catholic Church you'll see that he did almost the exact same thing as Antiochus Epiphanes did in 168 BC he did the same thing in 312 AD the same way Antiochus Epiphanes tried to make the people get rid of the law well Constantine was actually successful in making people abandon the law of the Lord and the same way Antiochus Epiphanes tried to cause Israel to celebrate Christmas well Constantine was actually successful and that's why most Christians celebrate Christmas today well again you see that Constantine started this actually in the year 312 
And when you come over to the book of Daniel and chapter 12, you can also see mention of the acts of the Catholic Church. In verse 7, when you have the man clothed in linen telling Daniel how long will be the scattering of the holy people. Well, of course, that scattering started in 312 A.D. And the man clothed in linen told Daniel that there shall be a time, time and half a time before all of that is accomplished, before all of those things are finished. Well, we learn back in Daniel in chapter 9 that a time is 490 days or like it says in verse 24, 70 weeks. Well, if you come to a calculator and put in the year 312 and then add 490 years times 3.5 or 3.5 times 490 years plus 312, you end up in the year 2027. But anyway, I realize that's highly speculative. I only bring that out because I didn't want anybody saying after December the 25th of the year 2020 is, hey, where is the earthquake you was talking about? I actually don't believe that it will happen in the year 2020, but I could be wrong. But one thing I am for sure is this global earthquake will be a Christmas present to the nation of Israel. The rest of the world, not so much. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button. If I missed something, go ahead and drop down in the comment section. Please add your questions or your comments or your statements or your concerns. And be sure to subscribe and check our channel for many videos that we have published on how to be counted in this nation of Israel or those whose names is counted in the book of life. And may our Lord bless you and keep you, and may he shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.